Good morning. Fun. I haven't done this in a hot minute. Hello everyone, happy Friday. I'm looking for a Deborah Silverman. Let's see, how do I do this again? <gasps> Request to join. Ding, ding, ding. There's so many of you on here, but not the person I'm looking for. Um, let's see. <clears throat> question. Ooh. Whoa, you guys can ask questions now? God, I haven't been on here in so long. Good morning. Hello. Wait, maybe I do this. Oh, invite to join. Invite. Let's see if that works. Um, I'm having a conversation today with my fairy godmother. Uh, I've done a few Instagram lives with her before. She's an astrologer for all you star people out there. And all of you who aren't star people, you could still learn something, maybe. Or you can hang up. Um, hi. Okay, I don't know where she is. Ooh, this is embarrassing. There we go. I still don't know where she is. Why won't she? Wow, you guys can ask questions. That's really cool. Hmm. Here we go. Go live. There we go. Good oh, morning. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> yes. We did it. We did it. You figured it out. I figured it out. We figured it out. It's a lot of button pushing in the Aquarian age. Just tuck, just tuck that little piece of hair. That's why I put a beanie on. My hair is out of control too today. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. It's like the big, it's a big hair do day. It is. So pretty everyone's saying it's just true shaylee you got to oh my god i just feel wild you look wild you are wild you're you're a wild woman that can't be caged that's that's why we're here because there'll be no caging anymore no no never again <laughs> and so tell them tell them they want to know what's up we're in the middle of we just finished an eclipse for those of you that don't believe in it just notice the last month how much things have shifted Weren't there three eclipses? I mean, there's always like three eclipses in a row, right? At the end of the year. Is that, I don't know about anyone else, but when the end of the year comes, things go to shit for me, generally. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is eclipses. They're, they come in sets of two. So first there's a lunar and then there's a solar. And it happens like within a two week period and it happens twice a year. They're very significant for marking when shit happens. Because it is, it can be a very disruptive energetic. It's either an opportunity to change things up uh -huh. and not be the same as it was before, or it's an opportunity to go, oh my God, I'm so sick of this. You change patterns. You break the way the old thing happens. So it's permission. This is what astrology is about. Permission to actually make a marker. Yeah. And I did that. I swear, Shay, I, I am watching... Some people hate these cycles, like it's really awful, and it really disrupts, and it makes everything bumpity, bumpity, bump. And some yeah. people, some, sometimes things come back from the past, or old things reappear, and you get a chance to redo it. So it can go one of two ways, either really bumpity, bumpity, bump, where things feel awkward, and like you're pissed off because it's so much pressure, and the intensity increases, so people get like energetic heebie-jeebies or mm -hmm. something changes that you couldn't believe like a job change happens or you finally make a decision that you're not going to do something so it goes both ways yeah that resonates 
And I would say that um, because it was in Sagittarius and Gemini, it specifically assisted Sagittarius and Gemini's to make the change that won't return. And by the way, it's over now. Bye bye. Bye bye, Eclipse. Well, don't eclipse. Don't the energy of eclipses last thirty days? I love that. I love that you know so much. You're Saturn and Aquarius. They are impactful, and they can last for your whole life. Do you know that Einstein, on the eclipse in 1919, found relativity and marked that eclipse as a significant day that will never be the same? So it's that kind of thing. It's like, whoa. And he remembered, and across all time, eclipses, because they're noticeable, because the sun blotches out the moon or the moon, like you can actually see them with the human eye, um, all time cultures of all times would mark it as being a significant indicator, like something's in the sky that's inviting us for change. So it's real. It may not be easily discerned, but we just finished one during the new moon. I want to say it was one week ago. Today, the moon's in Pisces. So it was like, was not even four days ago? People are loving you, Shailene. Are you reading with the writing? I'm trying to listen to you. I know, but I can't help it when people love you. It makes me happy. Um, yeah, so the bottom note to that story is astrology, just like Saturn Return, there's markers that occur where you cannot be the same if you're awake at 5 o'clock in the morning. If you're awake, there are markers in the sky that offer opportunities where you cannot be the same after. And part of why astrology is such a useful tool is, let's say you feel stuck in your life. And you keep repeating the same thing over and over again. And let's talk about Saturn return, because that's, that's, that's when you're 28 to 30 or 58 to 60. During that moment in time, something can happen. Well, it lasts for a year. How about that? And you're in it. Where everything feels really disoriented. And then all of a sudden, something changes that you've been waiting to change for your whole life, but you couldn't. Because you kept talking. People say they get stuck, for example. A lot of people say they're stuck. And then all of a sudden, Saturn return happens and you're dislodged from your life. And then when it's over, I always think of it as like hitting your head. And then when it's over, you're like, oh my God, that feels so much better. And everything changed and out. So it, Saturn return lasts, honestly, for, I'm going to say a full year and a half. And I hate to say it, but you're right in it. I am super in it. I have, I have like another year to go. Exactly. So, so the thing is, you guys, take your hands off the driver's seat. No, off the driver's wheel. Is that the word? Like, you can't be in control during Saturn return. That's so the eclipses are slightly different because during that window, it's very short. It's a month long where there's an eclipse energy and it can last for, you can make a marker like, here, you'll like this one, Shay. About five years ago during an eclipse, I unearthed in my psychology that there was some part of me that was waiting for a back door that I was hoping they would send me a spaceship and take me home. And I kept saying in my language, I kept saying, I want to go home. And that eclipse, I said, that's the end of that, Deborah. Unpack your bags. You're landing on planet Earth. Stop having that sentence that you don't like being here. And I made a marker in the sand that changed my life. I really genuinely changed the attitude I had about wanting to be alive and loving this place. And I, I like glued it with super glue. <laughs> There's an eclipse that I will never forget. Santa return on the other hand, it lasts so long and it's such a uncomfortable and exciting change. That's more at 28 to 30, 58 to 60, where you really have to, let go. You can't even put words to it like that. It's more like, oh my God, life doesn't like me right now. It wants me to let go of my job. I'm making a move. I can't commit. I don't know where I'm going. It's like that. You can't relate to that. I can relate to some of those. I things. was being funny. I think the, this last eclipse is an eclipse I'll never forget. It was an eclipse that was a marker that defined a lot of concrete changes for me. Okay, good. <laughs> Yeah, pretty cool. It is really cool when you can kind of mark moments in your life by like universal energies, I guess. It takes, it takes a lot of awareness, you guys. If you are not believing in what we're saying or you wonder if it's true, 
it's a good thing because you have your whole life to figure it out. Eclipses have tw happen twice a year, and Saturn returned without a question at 28 to 30. How many of you out there are feeling it? That one's not debatable. Nor is it, you don't get a vote. You don't get to, like in Eclipse, oh, you can sure choose. Mm -hmm. You can, in Eclipse, you can say, I'm going to change this pattern. I really saw what came up during the, but during Saturn return, you're like, I always feel like it's hands off the wheel. What I've noticed is that, you know, there's a, there's been recurring patterns in my life where the same archetype of a person or the same archetype of an experience shows up. And this is this Saturn return has kind of broken my, it's illuminated my patterns that reveal why these cyclical patterns have happened. And it's, I, I now feel like I am, I have tools and I'm given tools and, and continued to be given tools to um, make decisions that honor myself. Um, and that's something that I've never had before. I've kind of always lived so much in service of, of the outer uh, that I haven't really felt seen much of most of my life. And I, and I think Saturn return has given me the gift of, um, of again, breaking the cycles that put me in positions that feel so vulnerable and, and um, painful. Cause it's automatic unconscious repetitive beha behavior that gets corrupted. I, so, so talk about that. So where once you continually use outer world to identify with, now you've changed that by fill in the blank. I think when you, I've been, I've been told some pretty harsh things in the last couple of weeks and it, has given me the opportunity to listen and to detect what has been correct and what are some things I do need to work on in my life and what is absolute bullshit and absolutely just not true about who I am. Um, and I think because of that, instead of reacting from a place of insecurity and taking something personally, I've been able to sit with my experience and react internally in a way that offers self-compassion and self-love. And also, you know, in the past, I, I was raised by psychologists, so empathy is all I know. Um, and to a fault, I take on everything from everyone around me always. And um, empathy for others without like a backbone of empathy for yourself can be very, very, very rough. And that was my whole life until recently. And it's, it's, it's been an incredible experience to um, go through such an insane kind of roller coaster of emotions in the recent history of my life and um, be able to be present for the other individual individuals, parties, and yet, and listen and honor their words and like, you know, commit very difficult, like very truthfully to wanting to be available to their needs and to also recognize that I have like a deeper sense of self because of it. And I never did that in the past. In the past, it was, oh, I'll just connect from myself to connect with you. Because if you feel seen and if you feel heard, that's enough for me. But the truth and the reality is it wasn't ever enough. And it led me to these destructive patterns and destructive situations that um, someone else's insecurities overrode my own ability to, um, to connect with myself and be able to be there for them at the same time. And that's a really hard thing to do. We're not taught that. We're either taught like, narcissism us against the world everything is a fight i'm gonna win or we're taught people pleasing bend over backwards do anything um and there's a lot that can come with those things you know there's a lot of resentment that can come there's a lot of projection and there's a lot of pain and at the end of the day you know everyone's work is individual 
It's not, it's not something that anyone else can do for you. And that's a beautiful gift of Saturn return for me. And can we just say that your chart is Scorpio? I mean, with Pisces, Moon, Cancer, the, the level of your sensitivity, which is what makes you the most exquisite artist. You can leave yourself by the mm, I could. No more. No, no more. That was Santa Return. So the nature of your chart, this is what you learn in astrology, you guys. There's, th there's four elements. And Shailene is like literally the quintessential example of water. That her ability to feel you or feel a character or feel her friends or her family is so much more than feeling herself. She used to leave. She would abandon Shay and go over to us until Saturn returned. Da, 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 da. So that's the element of water, picking up other people's energy and having so much compassion for them that you almost feel them more than you feel yourself. Yeah, but it's not healthy because no. you end up giving someone um, a version of yourself that's not present. I mean, I was raised in a way where it was considered more important to be there for someone else than it was considered to be there for yourself. And um, I always kind of, I always go back to the airplane thing, you know, put your mask on first before you help anyone else. And it's so difficult to do that, but it is so important. And I think especially today with the amount of fear and these like, you know, these tropes that are happening, no one is safe from feeling isolated or subject to judgment or assumption it's just kind of the human condition and so the more that we are able to communicate about getting into our hearts and also boundaries that was something that i didn't know i didn't know what boundary meant until recently um and a beautiful thing about a boundary is it doesn't require anyone to do anything because you are holding your space uh you know it's so easy and i'm definitely guilty of this for sure in dynamics to point a finger or whatever and there's definitely cause and effect that is true um however when you hold a boundary it's not a finger point it's like a you're putting your hand on your heart and you're saying like i honor you my therapist always says he goes if you He's like, say yes right now. So if you guys all try saying yes at home, if you feel safe in your body, that's a beautiful thing. And if you say no, when you feel safe in your body, that's a beautiful thing. And then when you're in a situation, the next situation you're in where you can't say yes or no and feel safe in your body, that's when like a boundary is necessary. Or that's when, you know, a, a, a reflection, um, a change of pace is necessary because it means you're leaving your body to be there for someone else or something else. It's not limited to humans. That was so well said. Say yes, say no. If you're not able to say yes or no and be comfortable in your body, you're going to disassociate. And there it goes. You, there, you leave you. So, yep. so quintessential water. There's, other, there's four other person, three other person rates and this one water element cancer scorpio pisces they really suffer from not being able to stay true to themselves first before they go over because think about water it can go anywhere it can it can float match it can it can land on anything and end up trying to be that thing that's what water people do the water is going to roll over your sheets and now it becomes the sheets your water's going to roll over the sand and now it becomes the sand rather than stay through it. Because earth does not do that. Earth people, they hold their body so much so that they can't feel. I know. <laughs> Such a different quality, completely different conversation. So today we're talking about water and the high road of water is putting your, I love this buddy, putting your mask on first, even though it's air, putting your mask on first and Paying so much attention to what's going on with you that when you go to match the other person, you didn't leave you. Crucial. 
I love that story. I mean, I'm so proud because that is not an easy, that's what Saturn Return did. It smacked you around to the point where you said, someone teach me, how do I make Shay first? You know, I think for me, it was just enough is enough. I, the, it's, it's not a new feeling. It's a feeling we all have our shit, right? And we're all used to our patterns. That's why they're patterns. And so when a pattern repeats itself, it's not a new feeling. It's just the knife cuts deeper in a way, but it's not new. It's not foreign. It's, it's, um, it's what, you know, and there is a point I do feel in everyone's life where you break. And that's what has happened to me recently. I broke. I, I felt challenged enough to break. And that was beautiful and sad and beautiful. Oh my goodness. So I think there's the worst thing that anyone can ever experience in life. Um, is being told something about themselves that's not true. When you're told something that you know in your heart isn't true about who you are, I, for me, that is the most painful experience in the world. Especially if it's thought new. Yeah. Cause that I, you. I think that's the most painful experience in the world because it, it means that that other person, people, experience, whatever situation is hurting so badly that they cannot take the time or they don't, they don't have the ability to take their blinders off to notice you because they're too busy noticing their own pain. And that's something we all experience, but it is, it's painful for on both sides of the equation. And the opposite of that? The opposite of that, what do you mean? Is they see you to tell, what would be the healthy version of that if the person could? You know, I had a conversation with someone last night who said to me things about myself that I had never realized somebody could notice. And that person had spent a lot of time around other people who have some pretty big issues with me. And um, it was interesting to hear their reflection on on um, not buying into anything other than being able to be there for me because they're so there for themselves. Um, and that was very cool. It was, it was a gift, you know? It's like when an angel comes down and kind of kisses you for a moment. That's what it felt like. I felt kissed by an angel. Love that story. That's the name of a movie that hasn't been done yet. Kiss <laughs> No, I think it has been done. <laughs> oh, there's a yeah, movie. Maybe it's a song. Maybe it's like a country song that I grew up with. Kiss by an angel. When someone shows up in your world, that's what you and I do for each other. When you're with someone who sees you so well, you feel so seen and you feel so touched at the end. You're like, more of you shut up because they were Here's the, the thing. It's not a lot of people know how to be there for you without needing you. And I am not a master at this by any means, but that was the angel's gift last night to me was being able to receive me and be there for me without needing me. Um, and that is a gift. If we can all kind of find space in our lives to be able to do that for people, I think, um, I think the world might look a little different. Love that thought because angels don't have any needs for them. They're just flying lightly. They come at you and then they fly away without any agenda. Yeah, the agenda. Oh my God, Lips of an Angel by Hinder. Yes, that song. Oh my God, that takes me back to high school. Um, the song I was thinking of is called Lips of an Angel, not Kissed by an Angel, but it's kind of the same thing. And then the couple just reminded me. Someone reminded you, lips of an angel, the one that kisses you with no agenda and you walk away feeling so seen that everything gets brighter and shiny. I think it's um, an old, old, a past lover who was very, very good at being honest. 
um, with where he was at in life, who he was, all those things. And he said to me, what, what was my train of thought? What were we talking about? I forget. No. That happens. I'll about remember. Hmm? <laughs> you were being, there were lips of an angel and a, and a lover talked to you and said something truthful. I'm going to make you remember that. Yeah, something about not needing someone but wanting someone. What were we talking about? What did he say? That freedom of having an angel with no agenda who just tells you the truth and loves you and walks away. And, and you, I love those people. Yeah. I'm pretending there's a host of angels gonna say? that are going to remind you of what you said. Here come some angels in your room. Be careful, everybody watching. There are little angels around. You can't see them. And all they want is for you to be you. <laughs> it's true it's really true everybody just wants us to be ourselves the thing is there's not a lot of time and space unless we demand it and take it to get to know who we really are um fuck what was i gonna it'll, say it'll come back it'll come back it's gonna float right back ahead. you know the best part of covid for me was being alone and making that commitment to stay true to myself, no matter who came back into the room when it was over. You're so good at that. It's taken me so long, Shane. I'm now. I'm so good at it. I love being alone. But it's, look, I'm an older person. I'm like twice your age, and it took me just recently till I realized I so value the integrity of my. Like now, if someone is saying bullshit about me, there's no more kind. Like oh. Well, I have to go now. Like popcorn. Like I am not even entering. I'm not doing this conversation. So thank you to COVID for giving me permission to face my loneliness and loneliness and turn it into, I said, I walked past loneliness and turned it into insight city. I got so much insight during that window. I, I never knew how much I enjoyed the feeling of being separate and then finding myself. So when I came back into the world, I was never going to, I'm never giving myself away again. It's so beautiful. I remember what I was going to say. Goody. But you are the queen of everything you just said. You are, I can attest, you are so good at that. Um, I was going to say, he taught me how to be honest with who I was and who, because he was honest with me. We met, I was very young, I was 19. And I was desperate to be in a relationship with this person because I was so in love with him. And he said, I can't just be yours. Like, this is not like, I don't want monogamy. I don't want the traditional thing. And I remember at 19 years old, growing up in suburbia in a very conservative town, the idea of anything other than a monogamous relationship was shocking to my system. Um, but he taught me so much about how to, how to communicate his needs and where he was at, because I was never taught that I was taught. You kind of just go with the flow. You don't really communicate what your needs are. Or even if you're unhappy, you kind of suck it up. And, um, and I think most of us are, but because of my experience with him and the, the way that I handled our separation, which was not the best. I could have definitely done better. Um, I learned to never not be transparent. And some of the biggest disappointments in the later half of my 20s was engaging in relationships with people where from the very beginning I said, this is who I am. This, these are my needs. This is what I will never do. This is what I do, will do. I am not a traditional person. I don't kind of, you know, do the traditional thing. And people, shaking their heads and nodding and go, yeah, 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 of course. I see you. I honor you. I want that too. And then getting to the place in a relationship where, you know, real commitment is able to reveal its face, whatever real commitment means to you or to your partner, or to the, whatever your experience is. And then you realize that there's an agenda and that the nodding of the head and the saying, yes, I want that. And I see you and we're cool. Like, I love you for being that weird person that you are suddenly becomes a threat to the relationship that they had a secret agenda for. And that was something that I used to do. And because of my 
old partner, I learned not to do anymore. But it's interesting being on the other side of it and experiencing the kind of secret agenda thing because it is real and it's important for all of us to 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 listen <laughs> to you know the the ins that when people show you who they are and they ask for what they want, we're obviously allowed to change and we do change, but most of the time it's the most vulnerable we'll be. And then our, our agendas and our insecurities and our needs and our desires get in the way. And suddenly what you used to love about a person turns into the thing that you feel the most threatened by. Welcome to relationship where the truth goes up in shades of color. Time goes by and you get to choose again, and again, again, and again. And when you love, you love forever. And there's some people you can't get rid of. I'm one of those people. I don't leave. None of my past experiences <laughs> can get rid of me. Even if it's just a hello and then a dream sometimes. Because love just grows, whether you're with, the, if it's tr someone you love, it will never go away. Kind of a cool thing. So, so welcome to astrology. You're described Aquarius. Permission to be yourself at all costs. Mm -hmm. And be understood by communicating. Even if the person doesn't agree and pretend to understand you, you will not change your sensibilities to accommodate them ever again. And that's real, strong individuality, which you are. It's the difference between saying something and then taking affirmative action for yourself, you know, because you can say all day long, this is who I am. This is what I want. These are what my needs are. And the minute that that kind of trust is broken or that other, the other insecurity comes into play, which then creates an agenda. If you don't uphold those standards that you have for yourself or the desires and the needs of yourself, then the words don't maybe mean as much to that person. You have I've learned that a lot too. You have to be willing to be alone. I think the opposite of codependence is what you're describing, turning into a pretzel, shape-shifting, saying whatever you need to say to match the person. The opposite of that is you're willing to say, nothing matters more than me being me. That's the highest road of astrology. Like, let me study me. Let me get to know me. This is what you've said, what, what I've seen about myself now. I cannot not stay true my personality type is where before I was willing to like, watch me shape shift. What can I do to make myself, I'll just start to do whatever you want to do. And then eventually as we learn, this is so powerful and why I love astrology so much. You get to be really genuinely, authentically committed to you. So you as a Scorpio who has so much intensity, you cannot not be emotionally transparent and still be happy. Yeah. And my lesson is, I feel like I'm pretty good at being emotionally transparent, but then I feel like I self-sabotage by not wanting to hurt someone's feelings when they start projecting onto me. And instead of going, all right, this is where I check out. This is my boundary. Um, I shut down because I don't want to hurt them and, and I'm hurting so much. I don't know what else to do, but that's an old story. Old story. Bye bye. That was for so many people can relate to that. You know, it's, it's, it's so we're not taught how to engage in relationship. Don't even, not even with the word conscious where we, we as an individual are the relationship. Well, yeah. Intimacy is into me. I be. like, if I'm going to be I love that. I have to go get to know me first and it's, you know, I'm telling you guys as a grown up, I've been on this planet. So You're not really a really grown up. You're just in a grown up's body. I, I'm just, got, I, I look at my birthday. I don't think my, yeah, based on numbers, I really figured out the, um, I'd rather be alone. It's hard to say this out loud and have my integrity and my boundary of really authenticity than compromise. And yeah. Boy. So you guys, if you're watching and you want to come study astrology or you're feeling like, how do you get to know yourself? Like what if Shailene is a student of her own psychology? She is not someone who does anything. Anyone that knows her knows. She's a deep thinker. She reflects on herself. She asks for help. These are all the things that make a human being 
healthy. That Scorpio, that's the best part about Scorpio. I'm going to stare in the mirror and do my therapy and ask the hard questions and I'm never going to stop. I love that about Scorpio. But there's other signs who are like, don't look now. Just keep running. That would be air signs. We'll just pretend. We'll fake it till we make it. And the invitation is, who out there wants to study? The first thing you got to do is go study your own nature, which you did. Did you know before we met about your sense? I mean, could you have said your sensitivity and your pretzel shape? Yeah, no, yes. What were you going to say? Yeah. <laughs> you, knew, you, knew, you knew about the sensitivity. Yeah. I have exactly two minutes I didn't before know we're going to end this choice. I knew about sensitivity, but I didn't know that it was a choice. And I didn't know that I had the a choice to do anything other than let my body be a vehicle for other people. Ooh, baby. I didn't know I had a choice to not let that happen. Shay, I have exactly two minutes before I have to jump off this very... Well, then you better say something really funny. Okay, want to hear this joke? So Mickey went to the lawyer because he wanted to divorce Minnie and the lawyer oh, said yeah. Mickey and Minnie Mouse okay yeah she, he had he was ready to divorce her he was so sick of her and he went to the lawyer and he said to the lawyer I am going to divorce Minnie and the lawyer said you cannot divorce Minnie because she's crazy and he said I didn't say she's crazy I said she's fucking goofy <laughs> that was bad okay you guys uh Go to my go to my Instagram because guess what? There's a school starting and I don't even know what to say to them. But Deborah Silverman Astrology, now I'm pushing the button. I love you, Shailene, so much. And I'm so I love that little plug before you bounce. But it's true. I mean, you do change people's lives with your ability Teaching. to give them to themselves. I give them back to themselves. What better who has a better job? Me or you? You, me, you, me. I don't think either of us can call them jobs. I think we're both pretty lucky to do what we do. And we're so thankful. And watch this. I'm going to push a button. I don't like this part. I don't we want love what a funny woman. Um, thanks, guys, for listening. <laughs> I hope you have a beautiful day. And happy weekend. Maybe. Maybe I can.